Welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today's gospel lesson is Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers, workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you must go out and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go out and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Take, don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The song for today is based on Psalm 27, called This Alone. Green. 
you, Linda Cannon, for reading the scripture. And thank you, Bob Sisko, for the song, Praise the Lord, My Soul. And thank you for joining us today. I'm Pastor John Kolb of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Kokomo, Indiana. The text of the message today is found in the Gospel reading from the New Testament book of Matthew. The title is The Undeserving. The text is Matthew 20, verse 16. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You may remember the name of Larry Burkett. He was known as a Christian financial consultant, author, and radio personality. He initiated three radio programs, Money Matters, How to Manage Your Money, and Money Watch, and did short features entitled a Money Minute. In his book, Business by the Book, he wrote about an office he leased in a building that had a foundation that was not properly constructed. The building was sinking into the ground several inches a year. After more than three years of putting up with various problems, Burkett moved his business out into another location. Two months after he left, Burkett received a call from his former landlord. The former landlord demanded Burkett remodel and repaint the office he had vacated. Burkett said no, but the former landlord continued to call with demands. Burkett consulted an attorney who agreed that Burkett had fulfilled his legal responsibilities and should not do anything further. Burkett's son reminded him that the former landlord and his wife had lost their only child and were still suffering and that Burkett had often commented that he would like to help them heal from their loss. Burkett's son suggested that this might be an opportunity to do that. Burkett considered what his son said and he decided to commit thousands of dollars towards the restoration of the virtually non-usable building. Burkett gave his undeserving former landlord a gift of grace. I told you the story as a comparison to the parable in today's gospel reading, which is an illustration of grace for the undeserving. In the parable of Matthew 20, verses 1 to 16, a landowner had a vineyard that had to be harvested. He went to the employment office early in the morning and contracted some day workers to start the 12-hour workday at 6 a.m. At 9 a.m., he could see that he needed more workers, so he hired additional help. At noon, the landowner decided more workers were needed. These would work for the six remaining hours. The harvest was really good, and the first workers had worked for nine hours already, so at three o'clock, he rounded up more help for the last three hours. There was still much fruit, so at five o'clock, he grabbed more workers for the last hour. It appears the vineyard landowner was a businessman who knew how to stretch his dollars, and he was fair to his employees. Wisely, he hired just enough workers who worked the exact number of hours the task required. The vineyard landowner was fair with the workers, as Burkett's landowner and landlord had not been. However, there was trouble. When it was time to pay the workers, the hardworking first comers had worked all day long, waited as the last comers were paid. Then it was their turn. The vineyard landowner fulfilled the agreement. He paid them exactly what they had been contracted to be paid, not a penny less. 
but those long and hard-working servants were not happy. The first ones who had worked all day felt they had earned more than the latecomers, and the others would get paid less. However, the landowner paid the short timers, including the last arrivals, the same standard full day's wage. And if that wasn't enough to irritate, when the first workers in the vineyard saw what the late arrivals were paid, they probably felt they deserved more pay or even a bonus. But that didn't happen. The first ones were paid exactly according to contract. The late arrival workers, including the ones who came last, had put their full trust in the vineyard landowner, did not have a contract, and probably did not expect to be paid the standard whole day wage. Most likely, they were grateful and surprised at receiving it. This parable, if taken literally, would drive some businessmen, workers, economists, politicians, and anyone who demanded fairness up the wall. What happened was not fair. Some definitely deserved more pay, and some were undeserving. So why did Jesus tell this parable about the undeserving getting as much as the deserving? First of all, the lesson Jesus teaches here is consistent. In the previous chapter, the disciples pointed out Jesus' precious resource of time for teaching, preaching, and healing diseases was being wasted by parents seeking nice words of blessing for their children, children who were considered to be undeserving of that time. Jesus' response was, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And, Later, when a very deserving young man who had gained riches and who attained a high position of being a ruler in the temple, asked Jesus if there was anything else he could possibly do for eternal life, Jesus told him to give up all that he had accomplished as if it had not achieved anything of value. Because of what Jesus had said to him, that rich young ruler just up and left. And the disciples were shocked. And they wondered how anyone could be saved if their accomplishments, such great accomplishments, would not save them. Then and now, many assume that those who hold responsible positions and who have achieved success and whom other people like and who work hard and gain wealth and position are deserving and pleasing to God, and they are the first to go to heaven. Whereas, these people assume that those who have not done well, who live in poverty, who have not done good things, and who are not well liked, must be bad. And so they are the last and the undeserving, and therefore go to hell. However, Jesus said, many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. That was in chapter 19. Those same words are repeated at the end of today's parable in verse 16. Do you know to what kind of people to whom Jesus devoted most of his ministry? They were people considered to be the rabble-rousing, the sinful, and the undeserving. When Jesus twice, within a few verses, says, so the last will be first, and the first will be last, 
that may be surprising to many that the message is totally compatible with God's words and with his words and actions. We ought to take that very seriously. And when the truth is told about us, we thank God that he does reach out to and minister to those who are undeserving because because we all of us are included among the undeserving we are included among those in the parable who were the latecomers who had faith to trust the landowner to decide their fate we are not to include ourselves among those who believe in themselves and trust in their own merits who felt that they deserved more. We do not earn eternal life. It is a gift. God's gift of grace to the undeserving. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son, to sacrifice his love because he loved us. Trust and believe in him. Paul understood that he was undeserving. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. In conclusion, because of grace, Larry Burkett spent thousands of dollars to restore a non-usable building for an undeserving landlord. In the parable, because of grace, the landowner paid a whole day's wage to the undeserving. Because of God's love and grace, Jesus devoted most of his ministry to the undeserving, and he sacrificed his life for all of us who are undeserving sinners. Because of the grace of God that was given to St. Paul, he labored long and hard to share God's grace with others. We, the undeserving, have also been given God's undeserved grace, and we too are to share it with others who are undeserving in the world. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.